You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Ellie. Um, let's have a look at some of the papers for you this morning. Sunday Times looking at Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, uh, apparently asking civil servants for help when it came to a motoring fine mm. and a speed awareness course. And it's all it's a slightly confusing picture, but it seems like she wanted a private course rather than having to sit in with the rest of us. Mm. The Observer reports on a Tory donor being investigated over allegations of fraud and money laundering. Uh, front page of the Sunday Express giving light to Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch uh, saying Britain's future outside the EU will be a roaring success. And the Telegraph dedicates their front page to the government's migration czar, reportedly backing plans to crack down on foreign graduate visas. And finally the Sunday people. Oh, it's got the uh, story that, I mean everyone's got a picture uh, of Holly and Phil apart from the Observer as far as I can make it out. Um, we've had our Phil is the story, as uh, Philip Schofield has officially gone from this morning. Last show was on Thursday. He just didn't know it at the time. Didn't know it. Nope, didn't get to say goodbye on no. screen. Very, very interesting. Well, we're joined now by journalist and political consultant Emma Burnell, alongside editor of Spite, Tom Slater. Good morning to you both. Good morning. morning. Emma, let's start with you, shall we? In the Sunday Telegraph, the foreign graduate visa crackdown. Yeah, I mean, this story recurs, what, every six months or it's, so? Yeah. Um, we go back and forward. The problem is, is that foreign students are an enormous what's considered export. So our university system is one of our biggest exports. Um, they are incredibly attractive and they bring in a great deal of money. And as we, um, we need to fund university research and a lot of university money comes in through much higher tuition fees that are paid by foreign students than paid by UK students. Um, if we are going to make it less and less attractive for people to come. Um, they What they're allowed to do at the moment is stay for two years afterwards. See, that's the problem, though, isn't it? Well, you say that's the problem. Why can't what? they come here, get their education that they're paying for, and then go back again? So what you're saying is we should have these people who have suddenly come out of university all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and suddenly trained up and then send them off to elsewhere. Well, um, unless we need them here. I mean, because as Rishi Sunak was saying this morning, you know, we should decide who is on our shores. Well, if, if, if there's a job for them that we need them to fill, great. I mean, reason. so the question, and this is it, you, you can absolutely decide that you don't want to do this. We will then attract fewer students, mm. which means that we will lose the money going into those universities. And they are at the moment, you know, it's, it, they come in and they take reasonably high paying jobs because they're university graduates. Um, when they're coming from abroad, they've probably got... The, they'll be doing more like a business degree than my English and sociology. Um, so they, they will largely be then contributing to the economy for two years because they'll be taxpayers. It, it, there is, there, it's perfectly reasonable to say that you don't want to do that anymore, but there is an economic cost to it. And mm. that is always the trade-off. And we need to talk about what those trade-offs are and how you are then going to fund universities to ensure that the kind of research that we have that is world-breaking and world-leading um, can carry on. Tom, what do you make of this? Is this the sort of, of people that we want to retain in this country? I, th I think, you know, as um, Emma's already been saying, if people want to come and get their education here and also to contribute, I don't think people are necessarily against that. I think the, the problem is, and this, um, the issue of student visas in particular is a good example of this, is in terms of all different forms of migration, there's often not been much actual public discussion about what the policy is and what the aims actually are. So people open a newspaper and they find out that a huge chunk of the um, net migration figures that will we'll find out about next week, will be international students as well as dependents and family and so on. I think already yesterday there's been like an eight-fold increase in the number of people who are coming over with those students, you know, the um, close family members, children and so on. And this is something which hasn't necessarily been talked about. If anything, there was often a caginess within government where, or within Parliament certainly where people say we should take these numbers out of the net migration mm -hmm. figures to almost kind of obscure them. So I think this is a problem that you see time and time again is uh, an issue of migration isn't discussed properly, isn't debated properly, people feel like they haven't had their voices heard on it and therefore numbers creep up in them out of nowhere and they think what is going on. So I think whilst I'm completely in favour of international students coming here and contributing and so on, although I think there is a problem with an over-reliance on the inflated fees that they're paying, and it doesn't show that the university sector is necessarily, necessarily in rude health, but at the same time we need to be able to 
actually advocate for that policy and have the public with it. And as on this issue, as on so many others, there hasn't really been that over the course of no, the past decade or more. You know. Point. But polling is interesting on this because actually, um, while there is a sort of general feeling that mig uh, migrant numbers should be smaller. In general, it's not university students. So they're, they're actually quite um, well accepted amongst those polling numbers, even when anti-immigration sentiment is high. Yes, but, but well, I can understand that. What I can't understand is is is, is then the dependents coming along. Well, I mean, if, you've very if you're going off to do a three-year degree, you probably want, and you are, uh, people are studying older and older. I, so I did my master's degree in my 40s. Um, so you can imagine, particularly if people are doing higher degrees, they're older, they've got a family. Again, one of the ways to attract people mm. who will, will be higher earning and paying those fees. OK, I'm going to jump in there because I didn't realise we were quite so tight for time. We've only done Sorry. one. So no, 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 it's not your fault. Let's have, can we just very quickly have a look at the Sunday time? Because from students to teachers, and they should get, according to an independent body, 6.5% as a pay rise. Yes, so uh, we always remember the way in which ministers like to hide behind the independent pay bodies, um, but in this instance, that's um, not going to wash because they've come out with a figure that the government isn't necessarily comfortable with. As you say, it's 6.5, whereas the government's suggesting that anything 5 and over could actually fuel inflation. Um, and now they're obviously stuck with the position of do we take this or do we not? And also, given the fact that teachers have their squeeze on their wages over the course of the past decade is something like 10 percent even before you kind of price in the economic pressures of the current day it's still not necessarily getting them back up to par as where they were so it just shows how difficult the politics of this are at the moment definitely it will be really interesting to see if that changes the negotiations um, between the unions mm -hmm. and, and the government okay. uh, tom and we've got to leave it there i'm afraid don't know what happened to us there it, it, <laughs> it ran away with us didn't it uh, but you'll be back in the next hour absolutely thanks very much